Hey everybody, I'm Chris Char from MS Things, and today we're going to be looking at some practice problems for the AP Computer Science Principles Exam Multiple Choice section. So I thought we'd go through some multiple choice questions and look at some of the concepts we might encounter, and if we're unfamiliar with some of the concepts, how can we still tackle the question and have a good chance of getting the right answer? So let's take a look at our first one here, number 21. The question says, which of the following algorithms require both selection and iteration? Select two answers. So this is one of those questions at the end of the test where we'll have to select two answers. And before we even go into the options, let's take a look at our question more deeply. It asks for an algorithm that involves both selection and iteration. So there's two facets of a task being accomplished. Um, so let's take a look at our options now. A says an algorithm that given two integers displays the greater of the two integers. This one has only one facet of a task, and there's no compound task on top of that. It's only displaying the greater of two integers. Only selection is being accomplished here. Therefore, it does not meet our criterion, so we can cross out A. Let's move on to B, an algorithm that, given a list of integers, displays the number of even integers in the list. Okay, so this one definitely has a compound task. Not only does it have to select all the even integers, but it has to display the number of integers in the list. It's not just displaying the even integers, and it's not just displaying the number of integers, it's displaying the number of even integers. So there's a task and a compound task on top of that. Therefore, selection and iteration are both involved in this algorithm. So our criteria is met, so B is a good option. Let's move on to C. An algorithm that, given a list of integers, displays only the negative integers in the list. Okay, here also, it's kind of in the same boat as B. There are two facets of the task being accomplished, right? displays only the negative integers so not only does it have to display the integers but it has to qualify that and select only the negative integers so because there is a compound task here as well selection and iteration are both involved so our criteria is met C is a good option let's move on to D uh, an algorithm that given a list of integers displays the sum of the integers in the list okay so two facets of a task or a compound task none of that is achieved here so really, it can't be selection and iteration because it's, it's only displaying the sum of the integers. Now, even if we didn't know what selection or iteration meant, we understand that since there are two descriptors of the algorithm, there have to be two facets of the task that are described in the answer. So we can just from that cross out A and D, which leaves us with B and C, and we need two answers. So we could have gotten it that way too. The best answers here are B and C. Let's take a look at our next one here, number 18. Which of the following is a true statement about data compression? Now, even if we didn't know what data compression meant, and this is true for all questions on the AP Computer Science Principles Multiple Choice portion, mostly, they're asking for a nuanced answer to a complex solution. So that means that we want to try to avoid absolutes, only, never, always. These are words that signify that the answer is too simple or oversimplified to be a proper descriptor of what's being asked for. Therefore, uh, we should safely rule out any absolutes. Uh, let's take a look at our options now. A says data compression is only useful for files being transmitted over the internet. Again, only. That's a red flag because it talks about an absolute. Uh, and also, we know that there are many mediums of transferring files, not just the internet. So and data compression, saying it's only useful for one of those mediums, is also an oversimplification. So we can kind of get a feel for the fact that this is not the right answer. Let's move on to B. Regardless of the compression technique used, once a file is compressed, it cannot be restored to its original state. Well, we know factually, just from our reading, this is untrue, because a file can be restored to its original state. That's the central concept of compression, is that um, the compression technique that we use determines if the file can be restored to its original state. Therefore, B is not a true statement. Let's move on to C. Seeing a compressed file... Uh, version of a file ensures that the contents of the file cannot be intercepted by an unauthorized user. When we're talking about prevention uh, from interception by an unauthorized user, we usually mean encoding. So encoding is really what prevents interception by an unauthorized user. And compression, although it contributes to that, is not a great indicator of prevention of interception. Also, this one kind of describes an absolute because it says cannot be intercepted. We know that even encoded files can be intercepted by an unauthorized user. So this one is taking the uh, the premise of the option too far, so we know that C is not right. Let's take a look at D. There are trade-offs involved in choosing a compression technique for storing and transmitting data. Okay, the word that jumps out at me there is trade-offs. Trade-offs means nuance, right? Because it's talking about pros and cons of both sides, and it shows more subtlety to the option and descriptor of what's being asked for in the question. So not only is the question addressed by, by talking about the different compression techniques, but it's also nuanced in that it talks about trade-offs. Therefore, D is our best option. 
Okay, let's take a look at our last one here. Um, number 15, biologists often attach tracking collars to wild animals for each animal. The following geolocation data is collected at frequent intervals. The time, the date, the location of the animal. Which of the following questions about a particular animal could not be answered using only the data collected from the tracking collars? Okay, on these questions where they provide you with data and ask you what can be answered or what cannot be answered with this data, these questions do come up quite often and the important thing to remember is we should not assume anything for the question. Whatever the question gives us, even if it's bare bones, that's what we have to use to answer the question. So here, those three facets of data, nothing beyond that can be used when we're approaching these different options. So let's take a look at our options. A says approximately how many miles did the animal travel in one week? Just using simple logic, we can understand that one week, right, so the date can determine that. And how many miles can be determined by the location of the animal collected by the collars. So obviously A can be fully answered with the data given. So it's not our answer. B, does the animal travel in groups with other tracked animals? Okay, well, the location of the animal will tell us where it is in relation to the other animals because it says with other tracked animals. So this one can also be answered really only with just the third part of the data. C says, do the movement patterns of the animal vary according to the weather? Now, nowhere in the question or those three data uh, is there an, a mention to weather tracking or climate tracking devices. So we know that weather is an external data set that is not involved in this question. We can choose that as our answer because it definitely cannot be answered with just the data given. Let's make sure that we haven't missed anything by just checking D. So D says, in what geographic location does the animal typically travel? Okay, well, this one easily can be answered using the third facet of the data. So, really, the only option here is C because weather is an external data set. Let's go ahead and try to review what we learned today. So, some of the concepts that we encountered data compression, right? Data compression does contribute to preventing um, interception by a file, but it's not a big a factor as encoding. That's important to remember. We also learned. Um, that subtlety is important when we're choosing answers to the question. We don't want to choose absolutes because they're usually too much of an oversimplification to describe the uh, complex or nuanced uh, question. We also uh, learned that when we're given an algorithm requirement of two different facets of a task, we have to look for options that display two different tasks or compound tasks. We learned about selection and iteration and that to achieve those, you need to have a task being compounded by another task. And finally, we learned not to assume anything for the question when we're given a data set when it wasn't mentioned specifically in the question. So that's pretty much all I have for you all today. And uh, let's just remember that we've studied for this test and let's not get stressed out and approach each question with confidence and we'll all do fine. So with that, I wish everybody good luck on the test, and please be sure to like and subscribe and share the channel. Thank you.